Okay. So I, I'm going to have some formulas of what I did to figure out this bracelet that happened before here. Uh, so I had to make a sample. I did it on the buckle, but I had to undo that to figure out how much cord I'm going to need. And as a joke, I was teasing somebody about doing this in these colors for the tutorial. Um, I was only teasing about that because some tutorials are kind of difficult to follow because of the color choice of the cords, especially the photo tutorials with multiple black cords. Sometimes they're hard to find, but hard to follow, excuse me. I'm actually going to be using blue and white, uh, electric blue diamonds and white. Uh, I figured out the cordage, and I, I have, I'll put those before this starts, but uh, Christmas time. So first thing I want to say, Merry Christmas, everybody. There's my Christmas bracelet. This one I just made recently, the... Grapevine sent it, but I did it in red and white because it reminded me of candy cane. So I just want to point out I'm not opposed to the knot and loop. In fact, I went through a period of time where I enjoyed making these, but um, I kind of have been having a good time lately figuring out a lot of JD's designs to put on the buckles. Just kind of a fun thing to do. So let's get started. All right. So got my electric blue diamond here. Let's find the center of it. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm finding the center of my cord. All right. There's the center of my cord. There's my buckle. We're going to take the back side, push the center up through. Now I'm going to take my two working ends, pull them through the loop. Then I'm going to do kind of two false cow's hitches on this end. So I take my left working end, come around the back. I'm going to go up through the buckle and through this little loop that I just made. Do the same thing on the right hand side, push everything over, get my right. Take my working end here, let's see. Push that over. Push that through from the back side. Pull it through the loop. Okay, take the twist out of it. Finish pulling that through. Have my double cow's hitch, kind of a false end here. Hook that up my other end of my jig. Got my jig set up nine and a quarter. Uh, you know, I, when I'm talking about the ball and loop again, I, I like doing bracelets freehand sometimes. Um, I didn't really see the value of a jig early on with my first jig. 
I couldn't get my hands around the cord. There wasn't enough space. It wasn't until I got this new Mini Cooper jig here that I've kind of really been hooked on doing the jigs and figuring out how to do these designs on the jig. But I use my old jig mostly just to set the length and then I'd do them freehand. Uh, nothing wrong with doing them freehand either, but here's an alternative if you want to do the ball and loop. Or if you want to do it on a buckle in, as opposed to the ball and loop. So I brought my working end up from the top. Let's move that up there just a little bit. Went down, and bring it on the inside. This is my left cord. Going to end up on the left here. I come up on the inside, over the top, around the back, up through, and through the loop. Okay, I'm going to pull my core tight. Hold that while I tighten this. Make it nice and snug. Move it over to the left real good. Do the same thing with the right. We'll put the right down through the front. Out the center. Take out any twists I got in it. I'm gonna go over the top. And then Take this out of the jig. Squish that over to the side a little bit. Give me some room. And we'll come up from the back. From the back up through the front. Okay, and then pull it through the loop here. So again, I'm going to pull my core side tight, hold on to it. Pull the other side. Okay, so we've got my double cow's hitch. I'm going to put the secondary color through using a FID lacing needle. Uh, whatever people, some people want to get technical about what a FID is and what the term is, but either way, you know what I'm talking about. You can use needle nose pliers, hemostat, whatever you need to to shove that through there. What I'm going to do now is just take my two ends, pull those until I find the center. And once I find the center, make sure there's no twists in it. We'll get the center and bend that down there behind. Just like before. So we've got... Double cow's hitch. Got my secondary color through the middle there. All right, so here's my pattern. It's not too difficult once you get it down. Um, again, in JD's video, he makes it from the reverse side. So it makes it a little difficult trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, I've been kind of slow to introduce all of my crazy to you guys, but today I think we'll probably introduce a little bit of my crazy to you. Because we're going to have to do this. Okay. 
Okay, we've got two cow hitches. We got our second color threaded through. We're going to take on the left side. I want to keep this right on in line with the core. I'm going to take my white, go under, and then back through this loop that we just created. Again, I want to keep this in line with the core, so I'm going to pull this tight. Well, I've got that on the core. Okay, we're going to take the right hand side. And it's going to go under the core and out this other side. Create a little loop. The white's going to go under, under this blue, over the core, and through the blue loop. Not, we don't need to go under the core on the other side. It's just through this loop. Just like tying our shoe. We've got a nice little knot there. We'll pull that tight. Keep this lined up on top of the core. Everything's tight. We're going to move on. Okay, so that's the left side. On the right side, this white is now going to go on top of the core. We're going to take the right that's jutting out to the side, under the white, under the core, back up, and through this loop, just like we did on the other side. And we're going to pull this tight. Now this is where I'm going to start introducing you to some of my craziness. I'm going to take a pen, and I've decided <clears throat> that I'm only going to use the cap because it's a little less obnoxious. I uh, made some of this video at work, and the pen kept coming right at the camera, and it was not good. So we're going to redo it, and I've taken the cap, put it in the hole there of that loop. I'm going to pull that tight, and the reason I do this is, you know, my compulsion compels me to try and keep my knots consistent, keep these little loops the same size. I didn't do it over here in the first one because of the way it comes out of the buckle. I think it looks better not to have a loop there. But this one, because it's actually going to be shifted down on an angle, we'll see as the pattern goes that it's a diagonal down the face of the bracelet. So we're going to keep a loop there. Okay, now I'm going to take the electric blue from the left side. We're going to go through the middle of the core, under, and out the right. The white's going to go under the electric blue, over the core, and through this loop. Again, not under the core on the left side, just through that loop. And like I say, it's just like tying your shoe. You should have this knot right there. We'll pull that tight. Keep this straight over the core. Pull it tight. And then once we remove that, we have a nice little loop. Okay, that's it for the white. Now we're going to repeat that pattern with the blue colored, the electric blue diamonds. So the one that's jutting out the side, we're going to go to the left. This is going to come along my core. We're going to take the electric blue under the core, up through the center of the two core strands, and back through this loop. Keep that tight to the core. And this is where I'm going to use some kind of a dowel, a mandrel, whatever you want to call it, to keep my loop consistent 
pull that tight, pull that tight. Now I'm going to take the white from the right between the cores underneath and out the left. The electric blue is going to go under that white, over the core, and through this loop. Again, just like tying my shoe there, keep that in line with the core. Tighten that up. Adjust this a little so it hides the core. And we should have two loops of similar size. Okay, now I'm going to take the right electric blue over the core, take the right one that's jutting out under the core up to the middle, and through this loop. Pull it tight. I'm going to put my cap in there. Keep that the same size as the others. Snug that up nice and tight. Now the white is going to go between the core, under the right core, and out. The electric blue is going to go under the white, over the core, and through my loop. Pull that tight. Adjust this to, over my core, pull out my cap, three consistent loops. Now you can see the white is the cord that's jutting out the side. So we're going to repeat the pattern with the white. We do white, blue, white, blue, but it's the same pattern. So I'm going to put this over the core. The white cord goes under the core out through the center, and through that loop. And because I'm crazy, I'm going to put my pen lid in there to keep my knot the same size. Okay, this blue in line with the core is going to go between the two core. Under the left core, let me adjust that. Okay, the white's going to go under that blue, over the core, through the hole. Tighten that up. Adjust this so it's over my core. Take out the loop. Loop, 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 loop. Looking good, huh? Okay. doing the white so we're going to take this is going to go along the core and the white that's jutting out goes under up and through the loop then we put the piece in there to keep my loop consistent tighten it up this blue going to go between the cores, out the right side, the white is going to go under the blue, over the core, through the loop. Tighten that up, adjust the core, remove my cap, and we take a look at it. Have a nice consistent pattern, white, blue, white. Now I've got my blues jutting out the side. We're just going to continue this pattern further down the bracelet. So we're going to add a blue on each side, and then it'll be a white, and a blue, and so on. So uh, we'll finish this up and get back together in a few minutes. Okay, so I've reached the bottom of the bracelet here. Continued the pattern. Let's. Uh, Take it out of the jig real quick. And I want to show you a couple things. So the formulas that I used when taking measurements, I have probably a foot on each side at least. 
the leftover, but um, I'd rather have a little extra now that I know how to do it. Uh, I don't have my samples. If you look at the samples I did earlier, my spaces weren't as big because I wasn't using something to keep them consistent. And so I think that's probably why <clears throat> on my sample I used more cord. But um, I like this look better. Uh, you can see here's my core hidden pretty well. Can't see it from the front. My other formula, however, for the size, we measured the thickness on my sample piece and it is right on the money. I came up with nine and a quarter for my eight inch wrist. So I set my jig at nine and a quarter and it's just the way I like it. Nice. It's snug, but it's not tight. Uh, you can see it's plenty of movement room. So what I'm thinking here at the end is we're going to do something. Let's put this back in the jig just so it's not bouncing around. Get my camera focused back in here on the bottom. What I think and I'm going to do is similar to the way I ended the uh, grapevine scented. I'm going to take these two to the back. And I'm just going to do a standard part of a Cobra slash Solomon. Keep those cords back. And let's see what that looks like. And oh, so my blue cords are going to come right out here by the buckle. It's like before. We've got that. I think that will do. All right, like I say, there's the pattern. It's really kind of a cool bracelet once you get the pattern down, and it's deceptively simple once you decipher what he's what what's going on. Uh, sometimes with the videos with no sound, no explanation, what they're doing is difficult. And then, like I say, he's doing it from the back which is an entirely different pattern and it makes it harder to see what you want to accomplish. Uh, just one second, I'm going to get my scissors and we'll cut this. Okay, so we've got our cord ready to cut. I'm just going to cut this close to the edge. My cute little baby scissors. Got my lighter. And again, I have this little tool I like to use when you roll it. Because of the knurling on here, it gives it a similar pattern as the cord. Okay, I'm going to cut the other white right there.
And then the two blues come right up through that center. We'll cut them off together. And again, I'm going to use the smooth portion here because this is what's going to go against my wrist. Melt those down. Let's move that over. And there we have it. Time for the MTV Pimp My Ride treatment. I'm going to go get a picture of this, edit the video, and we'll get it out there for Christmas.